Hello, everybody, and welcome to Camel City Chat. I'm John McPherson, and I'm here with Mr. Pat Ivey. Now, if you don't know who Pat Ivey is, we got problems. Pat is the Division Nine engineer that oversaw the changing of, see, I can say it once, Business 40 to the Salem Parkway, and I really want to welcome you to Camel City Chat, Pat. Great to be here. Thanks uh, Thanks for being here. You know, uh, you and I have run-ins occasionally. We saw each other a couple weeks ago at the... Uh, um, the realtor board, uh, they were having their meeting and you were nice enough to come in and talk about that. You've been on, uh, WSJS before, um, with us on real estate radio and, um, you know, it's just, it's incredible. Uh, I don't know if you knew this. Uh, we had the mayor on when we recorded the mayor, it was the night before the press conference. And he said, you know, John, I've got something I could break on the show. When are you airing this? And I said, it's going to be next week. He goes, I can't say anything. I go, what's going on? He says, John, I can't do it. And cause you know, I always am like, you know, and you remember this. I'm yeah. like, come on, give me, give me, give me something, because you know, I gotta, I gotta, you know, I gotta get some news out there. And so, what ended up happening was, is uh, he wouldn't tell me, still wouldn't tell me. And so I'm like, is it before? Because I wanted it to be on Valentine's Day. You know, hey, we right. love our city, and that's it. <clears throat> he goes, yeah, that's a pretty good idea, but we we're not gonna wait that long. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so when is it? And he's like, good to see you, John. I'll talk to you later. Call me tomorrow after you find out. <laughs> and um, uh, I think. Was my dad out of town? My dad was out of town and was coming back. And uh, I'm like, told my brother, I said, look, I said, be, it could be this, you know, it could be this weekend, you know, it's coming, they'll announce it tomorrow. And I was hoping that they were going to come back that way. But I actually got up that morning and had to go do something. I don't remember what it was, but I had to drive. And I'm like, I'm just going to take the time and go. And, and I'm not saying that there was not anyone with me. I'm not saying that I was filming while I was doing it and posted it online, a picture of the sign that said, you know, warning, 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 it's now open, or, you know, video of it going both ways, back and forth, not saying that that, maybe we could add that into this video so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm not saying I did that because, you know, I, I don't want to get in trouble, but it was pretty cool. Yes. And it's beautiful. And I want to talk about that in a few minutes. But so, Pat is here, DOT, Division 9 engineer. We got to ask you the, the three first <coughs> questions, as, as you know. Um, where are you from and how long have you been in the Winston-Salem area, because I know your K Vegas right. is, you know, currently man. live in uh, in Kernersville, but I'm originally from Fort, from uh, Rockingham County up okay. in Reedsville. Okay, I graduated, grew up there, uh, married my high school sweetheart. Okay, uh, from there, and uh, that was uh, back in the '60s, '70s, and '80s. Right, and then uh, went to school at uh, North Carolina State University. Wolfpack. All right, got Go that pack. for you. All you all you Wolfpack fans. Absolutely, you know Brooke Cash and celebrating yes, right indeed. now. Yes, right? indeed. Yes, indeed. So, uh, of course, when I started my career with DOT in 86, mm -hmm. right after I graduated, I uh, held a couple of different positions, but ended up back home mm -hmm. in Reedsville as the district engineer. And then I uh, was promoted, went to Greensboro for about a year before I was asked to, uh, to come to Winston-Salem in 2000. And I've okay. been here ever since. So you've been here 20 years now? Yes. Wow. Um, all right, so that's the first question. I want to get back to your family and all that stuff. The second question is, is where is your favorite place to eat? You know, there's a lot of great places in Kernersville and Forsyth County, but uh, I really love Out West Steakhouse. I'm glad you said so. So you didn't take the political route of Smitty and and, and the mayor there. I'm proud of love you. Love them all. Yeah, love right. them all. Uh, and, and as we were talking about, I mean, I'm so glad Out West is back yes. open. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Um, so we would, uh, uh, we would always go. My brother married a, a young lady from uh, Kernersville, mm -hmm. and when they would get together for Christmas or whatever, we'd go over, and, and that's where like, they would meet for like a birthday or something like yeah. that or, or Christmas, you know, you know <clears throat> exchange gifts uh, prior to you know, the big Christmas. But um, great steak. I mean a great steak there. Well, and, you know, for people in Kernersville, uh, them being closed for their renovation, it's sort of like Business 40 to Winston-Salem. <laughs> I'm sorry. What was that road again? <laughs> um, but uh, uh, yeah, there is a there is a drinking game for the colleges. Every time we say business forty, um, but no, uh, you know it's it it's just a great restaurant, and I'm glad they're back open. Um, you know, there's some other the um, uh, what's the name of the restaurant with the lady with the uh, the Mexican restaurants good. Um, oh man, what is it? It's right over near. Um, um, Park Chevrolet, but there's a Mexican restaurant that I always enjoy going to there. Oh yeah, um, right, right there on the uh, the corner. Yep, right. So we'll we'll remember it at some point. Um, the other is uh, um, the Italian restaurant over near WSJS is good. Um, and Giada's. I yep, yeah, you got that's right. And then the other one is the one that's right near the um, 
Seven Day Adventist Church in the gym there. That's the little Jay Peppers. God, that place is awesome. Go to all of them. Yeah, great, great they place. They really are. Yeah, I I, I enjoy. Um, uh, we've actually done our uh, MKT uh, uh, Christmas dinner or birthday mm-hmm. thing or stuff. We'll do it at Jay Peppers. If we're, <clears throat> we'll do the show and then we'll get everybody over to do that. It's My wife place. and I go to brunch there every Sunday after church. So if you want to ask Pat a question, you know where he's going to be every Sunday after church. Um, the, na- the last question is, is what is your favorite thing to do in or around this area? You know, when uh, I-, I knew a lot about Winston-Salem before we came here, but it really amazed me. Um, obviously, we live in Kernersville, but just the historical aspects of Winston-Salem has really been one of the things that I've found so intriguing and really interesting since coming here. So enjoy going to places like Old Salem and Bethabara and different things like that and really learning about the history of this area. is really phenomenal mm-hmm. uh, when you go back and look at all of that. And, uh, and then um, looking at the history of people like R.J. Reynolds mm-hmm. and reading some of the old books. And, I mean, it's really it's stuff you don't typically hear about, but – it's really interesting stuff. Hey, The Gilded Leaf is one of the best books you'll ever read. Yes. I mean, it is. there's some stories in yes. that. Um, and then uh, I, I enjoy going to Ranolda House. I kid around with uh, Stephen Dragasic that's over there about how I want to swim in the pool. Um, <clears> and they actually had an event, and I was out of town where you could swim in the pool, which I'm still never going to forgive him for that. Um, but uh, uh, love Old Salem. Um, and, you know, the art stuff around here is phenomenal, it is. too. It really is. Yeah. And uh, But, you know, I'm a, I'm a highway geek. Right. So, you know, just thinking about also looking at the history of the of the transportation system around here. You know, the old Salem Parkway, the, the original construction there, the North-South Expressway, and just reading about the history and the things that how those projects came along and how it really took champions to, to, to come together and, and really focus on those roads. Because really, before the, the 1950, there really wasn't a lot. And getting in and around Winston-Salem was very, very difficult well, back then. It blows me away through a shopping center. When you see some of those pictures, the highway wasn't even there yet. They took a risk knowing it was coming. Yes. And, uh, uh, I mean, I feel like we're very blessed with, with, um, with our transportation around here. Now, i, I got to ask you some questions about some things now. Um, but... Uh, um, we'll, uh, let me write that little note to myself. You know that I'm involved in that in some way. Do you know about this? No. Oh, we'll have to tell you about that. Can't wait. All right, so Division 9, located over there near um, the Flow dealerships down at the end of uh, Peters Creek Parkway, right? Silas Creek Parkway. Silas Creek Parkway, mm-hmm. thank you, sorry. Um, yeah, there are both ways. Yeah, yeah Silas Creek Parkway, um, uh, right before Main Street. Uh, in fact, if you ever give off Silas Creek Parkway off of 40, it come down the right ramp, there. you turn left, they're right there on the right. Um, how many people are on your team? Well, we uh, total in uh, in Division Nine. We've got about four hundred and fifty permanent employees, and of course, Division Nine does span five counties. That was my next question. Yeah. What is Division Nine? It is uh, Forsyth, Stokes, Davie, Davidson, and Rowan counties. So okay. we go all the way down to Cabarrus County in right. this division. Wow! I see a four hundred people. Um, obviously, um, the Division Nine engineer is actually the head of the group. Yes. Right. You mm-hmm. don't like to say that. I love that about mm-hmm. you because you're. You know, I don't. I don't have people that work for me. I work with people. Right. Um, and um, uh, so then, how is it divided from there? Obviously, you have some uh, uh, assistant division engineers or something like that. Is that what happens? I do. I've got. Run? I've got three assistants that uh, that work directly for me that handle maintenance and operations, right. construction, and then project development. Those are the ones that do all the planning and design work for all of our projects in this five-county area. All right. So um, let's see. I want to ask how long is the job? All right. Um, let's go back to the, 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 the popular topic that I hear from a lot of people, and then we're, I want to take the break, and then we're going to put the graphic up. And, I mean, the graphic is phenomenal that, that, that we can talk about and, and everything like that. So um, – why roundabouts? Because they work. So the first roundabout in your division was where? Fraternity Church Road, right off no, of Stafford Road. There was one before there, wasn't it? No, that was the I very first Lewisville one. Was first. No. Fraternity Church Road was the very first roundabout. And that was actually done right before I got here in 2000. And that was when roundabouts really started to, uh, to take off again. Because you remember decades ago, uh, there used to be traffic circles right. uh, in, DO, in North Carolina, right. all over the place. Right. And they took those out. Now, they were not modern roundabouts, 
So they didn't work very well. Mm -hmm. So they took them all out, you know, traffic signals everywhere. There used to be one um, that was at Club Park that was a little roundabout mm -hmm. that was that. Yes. Um, and I know that after I graduated from college, and I have no idea why, they actually, I mean, high school, they actually put posts up with rope so that uh, people couldn't drive through the middle right. of it. Um, I don't know why that would be, um, but... Uh, but Winston-Salem actually has not the, that I would have first, done that. the very first modern multi-lane roundabout, and that's the one we built uh, just south of Old Salem on, uh, on uh, Watown Street, Main Street, where all okay. that comes together right down there just south of Old Salem. So is that, is that right? Um, is, so that's Old Salem. Um, I can go to the uh, – it's not the Y anymore. I can go to right. Salem College. Yes. Up to, okay, I know which right that there. one is. That's the very admitting, first I, one. When you said Walton, I was thinking the one up near Holly Poultry and, and that. Um, I thought Louisville was the first one, but I guess it wouldn't have been because we voted that in while I was on yes, town council. that's exactly right. Yeah. And that's where I originally first met you. I think. It, that's right. Yeah, in like two thousand. Forgotten about that. To, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So we'll, we'll roundabouts are something that people uh, get a little frustrated about. They're very simple. You just got to take the time. I think all of us think of of European vacation and Chevy Chase oh, yeah. and round and round, round and round. round. <laughs> oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Um, but um, it's it is one of those things that uh, you know it's a little intimidating the first time someone gets yeah. into them. But it, does it save us gas? What what uh, save us brakes? What why? Well, the the everybody thinks that a traffic signal is the best way to go on these on all intersections, but uh, they're not very efficient at all. Roundabouts, of course, are designed to where you slow down, but mm -hmm. in theory, you really shouldn't have to stop. You wait for traffic to clear because uh, the circle traffic has the right of way, but you just move in whenever you get a gap. Everybody's going very slow, typically around 20 miles an hour, so that if we do have an accident, it's a minor one, you know, at uh, signalized intersections, you have an accident, they're usually pretty bad. So safety is the biggest thing, and then reduced congestion is the other thing for roundabouts. Both of those things are far superior to a uh, typical signalized intersection. Now, roundabouts can only handle so much traffic, so they don't work everywhere. So you're seeing me right. Now, this is one that I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I, uh, um, I've got to write this one down, too, because I've got a question about this. Because this is when this was approved, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. All right, so here's what I want to do. Um, as I told you, we, we kind of take breaks periodically. Um, I'm going to ask you the question, have you got any good projects that you've been working on lately? And as we say that, that's called a cliffhanger. We'll pause. As we pause, what we'd like to do is you've sent us the, the, the graphic that we got the other day. It's an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Um, and uh, if, you wanna, if you want a copy of this, just put a comment in there, and I'll reach out to you and send you this. It's a phenomenal piece. It shows every breakdown of everything in the TIP. That's transportation improvement. I learned that plan, all right? Um, and funding and things like that of when it's expected to be built. So we're going to stop uh, and put that up for just a second, and then uh, we'll be right back. So welcome back. I hope you enjoyed this again. The Camel City Chat. Uh, we got our new little bigger logo over there. We'll frame it out and make it prettier at some point. Um, uh, I'm John McPherson, your host, and of course our, our guest is Pat Ivey, Division 9 Engineer. Before we went to break and we showed you that graphic, uh, the thing that we talked about was, you know, have you got any projects going on? Anything happening? You know, what's... what's, what's One what's or happening? two. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, crazy. I've joked with people. I mean, you really can't, literally cannot go anywhere in Forsyth County without running into an orange barrel. So I have heard a joke in the past um, that that's the state flower. Yes. Um, so, yeah, and, you know, it's it's interesting. You know, people used to make fun of, oh, someone's working <clears throat> on the road and five people are, wa are watching or whatever. That don't happen mm -hmm. nowadays, you no. know, because of the fact that it's, um, you know, your people have more. It, we all have to work so much harder. And so no one's, no one, you know, it always made me laugh when people would say stuff like that. But, you know, it's, there are a lot of barrels out there. There are. And, you know, that's a good thing. That's a very good problem to have. Well, when we had the mayor on, we were talking about the Salem Park. We was, my dad had said something like, you know, I'd driven him to the, the airport that morning. He goes, well, now that that's done, when are they going to fix the other roads? And so the mayor told us about First and Second Street, which mm -hmm. is the question that I asked. I'm sorry that you got harassed that whole entire time. We'll talk about that off the air. Um, but no, I mean, you, you were handling every question perfectly. Um, but, you know, uh, first, first Street and Second Street will now 
go bi-directional, I understand. Yes. And you, so you don't, you, you consult with Winston-Salem's have their own DOT or they do you? Do. Okay. They do. And, so you guys and we work, work very closely together. Um, so what are the projects? What, you know, think of some of them off the top of your head. So you just, other than Salem Park, which you haven't completed yet. See, yes. people think it's completed. No, not even close. And I did not even believe you told me this. The bridge isn't even supported by how it's really supposed to be supported. It's temporarily supported. There are so many cool things on the Salem Parkway project, but the new uh, the new pedestrian bridge where uh, Green Street. Two, we got the two arches yeah, going. The over. arches. Yeah. It truly is a suspension bridge. So there, there's nothing like that in North Carolina. So uh, we'll, we'll take this. We'll take this bottle here. So we got the arch coming in, and there's a specific <clears throat> plate that that attaches to. Yes. The plates were made incorrectly. Yes. And your folks said, oh, no, 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 no. So then we've got them temporarily there, but we also then have, they, because of the magnitude of the project, am I correct in saying that we worked with the engineers to get it to where we could have the two lanes open? And then we'll correct it when the... That's right. Back. We have temporary supports okay. uh, holding the bridge up right now. But they were, they were, the supports were spaced so that we could still have two lanes of traffic on Salem Parkway so that traffic could safely go through there. Okay. So hopefully around March, early April, uh, the bri that bridge will be finished. All that will be removed. And the final pavement markings and all that can be done. And that's why we have that little... Yes. Right, because that we're, we're, we're um, correcting to get to the point we need to be. Correct. This okay. project is still very much under construction, and, and people have talked about the speed limit and things like that. Because it is under construction, you still need to slow down through there because at yes, night— Yes, I understand the Winston-Salem Police Department has been making sure that that is— I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. There were a bunch of tickets. And it's so funny, too, because, I mean, they're like, oh, yep, they got to pay the bills for when it was closed. <clears throat> it's like, give me a break, folks. Well, there's still so much that needs to be done. Obviously, a large portion of the city's multi-use path mm -hmm. uh, is being done as part of this project. Uh, most of that has not been completed, and over the next probably four months, four to five months, that is some of the main work that will be done in addition to completing all of the signing uh, to convert Business 40 to Salem Parkway from each end of the split beginning in Guilford County and going all the way on, over to the western side. All that has to be done. A lot of off-site improvements that we did to accommodate the, the traffic. and stuff and all yeah, that. Yeah, all that. Still got a lot of that work to do. And then once the project is finished, the city will come in. They're going to add lighting to all of the bridges that cross. And that's what those black things are that are just kind of sitting there. It's like, what are those? Yes. They're, they're going to put the there, lighting in there. There will be dining. lighting in there. We'll also have landscaping that will be done probably next fall and next winter to uh, to uh, really make it look even better than it does now. All right. So you all have a video, I believe, that shows the process from start to where we are now. Am that I is correct? correct. One was actually provided to us that the city did. Okay. All right. So I think we can get that. Yes. Uh, so why don't we show that right now real quick? We'll just show that. Um, so we'll take a break and... That's pretty darn interesting. Is that not cool? Yeah. See, I didn't realize they were doing that. Well, um, it's surprising to me you didn't because, you know, I'm surprised your people with their brand new drone, and don't tell Stabler about the drone because he will go nuts. Um, I, I, we got to talk about the drone. But I want to I get to the point that we're using the drone, and that is you let the people decide. I want to go all the way back to there. So how did this whole process start to get us to where we are now? Wow. Uh, 16 years ago, okay. we really started this in 2004. See, I was here when the Hawthorne curve was <clears throat> adjusted. I mean, there right. was a time where a tractor trailer went straight and was like hanging over oh my gosh, yes. First Street Draft House. And, you know, it and was you like had Chester's that. underneath there and the Rose and Thistle and all that. I mean, it was a, yeah. it was a great place to go get a, a, exactly. a libation and yes. down there. But So they moved it and adjusted it and all that. I right. don't remember when they did that. That, That's that was you, actually right? under construction when I got here in okay. 2000. Okay. So that was completed right afterwards. So then... Why did we need it, first of all? Well, when the bypass was opened, okay. uh, the Interstate 40 bypass, uh, we needed to do upgrades to the existing road because, mm -hmm. I mean, it hadn't been, nothing been done to it since it was opened in the mid-50s. So bit by bit, we've been making improvements. This was the last one-mile segment mm -hmm. uh, that goes right through the middle of downtown, really saved the best for last on there. And it was originally designed to be just a pavement rehabilitation project. We're basically going to go in and resurface it. 
Okay. And obviously, this was our last opportunity to do something really meaningful to this section. Plus, all those bridges were old. They needed to be replaced they, as well. They were old. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, uh, so we, we reformulated the project, got together, and said, we're going to completely rebuild this segment. Well, the big question was not only what we were going to do, but how were we going to do it? It's got 80,000-plus cars a day on this road. How are you going to go in, replace all those bridges, redo all the paving, everything that needed to be done in there under traffic? And you have to raise those bridges now, too, don't you? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so how, what, was our, what was our lowest bridge on Business 40? I believe there was one, uh, one bridge that was less than 14 feet. Uh, we now have a minimum clearance of 17 on every bridge. I want, yeah, was it like a 13.7 or a 13.8? Yeah, it, it was, was the last one, Peter Street Park, or, yes. or was the one right I think it was the Main Street Bridge. Okay, that, yeah, because, uh, you know, I always the lowest. Y- you see those and, and go, oh, well, nah, that'd yeah. be bad. Um, and, of course, you remember the years ago, the, uh, the, the old Green Street Bridge mm-hmm. was actually hit, and a large section of it came out. Right. Uh, and of course, we had to close it. We just took it down, and yeah. so we didn't repair it because yeah. we knew it was going to be done. But yeah. that was an example. Uh, there was some confusion. The trucker thought he was on Interstate 40 right. instead of Business 40, mm-hmm. and um, and he was over height, and and he hit it. So um, we then get to a point where what is it? Four or five years ago? When when do you start? <clears throat> what I what I call is is the DOT tour. And you're going around, and you're you're standing on the soapbox, and you guys were politicking for office, and almost, I mean, it really, guys, you guys were almost like running for office, to, you know, grassroots and talking. Right. I mean, you were trying to get the message out as much as possible. When did that start? Well, that started in essence in 2006, okay, uh, when we started doing some of our initial studies, and the very first question that we br- we brought to people was, how do we build this road? Uh, obviously, DOT has always tried to build a project under traffic. Well, mm-hmm. what does that mean? Reducing it down to one lane in each direction and things like that. We've, we've experienced that in this area tremendously with all the projects. So did we want to try to do something a little bit different? And we actually had the idea of, well, what if we close the road? Is that even something the community would, would even entertain? Right. And so we started putting everything together, laying out the case uh, for both options of building it under traffic, which was going to take more than six years to right. do, or do we close it completely and build it within two years? And what I will tell you folks is, is if you are coming from Kernersville towards 52, when you even had Main Street open, you stopped yes. before 5th Street, <clears throat> and you either got off at 5th, you either got off as Martin Luther King, That's I just correct. Winston-Salem State. Yeah. You get off at Winston-Salem State, or you get on 52, 52. or you get off at Main Street, it's backed up, yeah. and it, it it just wasn't. I mean, so if you had closed the road, I mean, if you'd left it down to one lane, excuse me, if you'd left it down to one lane, it, it would have been closed anyway. You're still going to have that backup. Yeah. Plus, you would have no access to the ramps right. for downtown anyway. Right. And, I mean, you know, you, you, you did a project here that, uh, um, what, we had one injury? A death, yes, and and I mean that that was horrible, yeah. Um, and uh, but it was a, a vendor that was delivering something. I mean, where if if you had had people driving through that section, I don't even want to know how many people. The got safety hurt. was tremendous, not only for the people that are traveling the road, but for the workers. The workers, yeah. Um, this able to get in and out very quickly. You know, right. the the mantra early on that we kept hearing was get in, get out, and stay out. And there's some yeah, so and 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 there's some incentives that we can talk about too. But um, so there is a member of your staff that I think is a small business owner that we have to say we love her. There is Cassandra is phenomenal. <clears throat> Cassandra Herndon was so, was a godsend. So so Cassandra would come down and I and where I met her was is at the Old Salem Farmers Market. So I know you probably yes. went there since you and your wife like Old yes. Salem and stuff. And she's walking around with this what bag it's a you know vinyl bag not a vinyl bag but a burlap bag and she's just walking up to everybody and, and handing out stuff and here's where we are here's how to get on my list here's how to do this and all these kind of things and um uh, a wonderful personality uh and also um someone that i think that that could diffuse anything you know it's like well it's gonna hurt my business well let me tell you what's gonna happen and things like that um and that's what's made you to be as phenomenal as you are, is you have wonderful, wonderful people. I haven't met anybody with DOT that I haven't liked, and I haven't met anybody with the DOT that doesn't understand 
you know, we all work for the citizen in a sense. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, we all work for the citizens. I mean, I work for the citizens too, in a sense, you know what well, I mean? It's, we, and, and I think the biggest thing that you guys did that is a testament is, is you guys did the golden rule and tried to take it up to the platinum rule. And that was, um, you know, that doing on to others. But you guys walked, drove, and experienced what it was be what it would be to be in your consumer's mindset yes. and realize that you needed to get it done quickly. Well, and the most important thing I think anybody can uh, that needs they need to do is realize what your own limitations are. Uh, this is a type of project we had never done, uh, certainly in my division and really in North Carolina. So we needed some assistance and help from people that had done this before. So the very best decision we ever made early on was bringing in a consultant that had this experience in another part of the, of the country, bringing that company in from beginning to end, not just the public involvement part, but being a part of the project even through construction. Mm-hmm. We've never done that before in DOT. And um, it was Neighborhood Solutions. Right. Jametta Posey, who most people in the in the community know because that woman knows exactly what she's doing. Right. And she really made us as engineers step out of our comfort, comfort zone, right. going out to the community, going where the people were instead of putting an ad in the paper and sending out a bunch of press releases. We went to the people and she really helped us with that. She had other people with her like uh, Simon Resources, other consultants. Cassandra Herndon, Mm -hmm. Uh, it was her idea to bring Cassandra on as the small business liaison. So many things that we tried, different approaches to public involvement. One of the things we've we've been criticized over the years years is that we've always made our decision and we're going out and we're telling people what to do. We could not do that on this project. This had to be a community-driven project to figure out what we were going to do and then particularly in how we were going to do it. And... The other thing is you guys, um, that that person made you all not be engineers because, you know, it's always an engineer is like, you know, you know, you have that reputation. Absolutely. Uh, you're one of the most personal we're, ones I know. But, I, I have another one that but I But we're numbers. Like, we're numbers right. people. Yeah, right. And, and while it may not be what I want, it's what you all have determined to be right. Yes. So, and it's always evolving because... We no longer have the go up one side, go down the other. We go up on both on the same side, right. so we got some green space there. And we also have an area that we can utilize if we need to do repairs to use a parking pad, et cetera, and stuff like that. You know, and, I mean, those are just cool <clears throat> things. Yes. All right, so I want to talk about three things left with, um, uh, with that. And the first is you kind of became a consultant as well. How many municipalities visited you and your staff with regards to this? <clears throat> wow. Um, this is being looked at by a lot of folks, not just in North Carolina, but across the, the country. The Federal Highway Administration is paying very close attention to this project as, as a way to build urban reconstruction projects across the country. What we've done here is incredibly unique, not just in North Carolina, but across the country. Closing an, an urban interstate like this, it, it's it just something happen. that's not done. Now, we were very fortunate that we had a bypass out there, and we talk about the transportation system in Winston-Salem. The network really is very good Mm -hmm. in Winston-Salem. Even with 1st and 4th Street intersection? Exactly, and it allowed us to to do what we did here. Right. Not without pain, but it allowed us, it allowed people to find different ways to get to work, which they listened to us and did exactly what we asked them to do. And it really worked. Yeah, peak hours, morning, afternoon. You got about an hour of congestion on, on Interstate 40 and on Salem Parkway. After that, nobody had We're problems. We're blessed with not having too much exactly. con- congestion. Yes. All right. So do you have a graphic of just this project? Yes. All right. Will you send that to me? We'll All right. We want to take a break, and we'll put that up there. Absolutely. Okay. So I want to put that up, and you guys can see exactly where the, the bridges are and things yes. and stuff like that. All right. We'll be right back. And so this basically was how long is this distance? For the project for the, itself, yeah, for one project, one point like, two miles. One point two miles. Okay. So um, thanks for sharing the graphic with us. Um, and then, uh, all right. So the next question is this: uh, the road. Okay. So we're going looking the road, and you know, not that I've ever had a car accident. Oh my gosh! 
but you know, you had those wires or guardrails or something in there. Um, you know, you're driving on uh, 40, because I can say that now, right. driving on 40, you'll see a, I, sometimes a car will get wrapped up in the wires or things like right. that. Um, I never knew that that was my responsibility as, because I, I hit a guardrail one time uh, 18 years ago. Um, and uh, they like, well, we got to get your information because you may have to pay for that. I never knew that. Yeah. Fortunately, someone else had hit it before right. me, so I was good. But with regards to, you know, my wife is from Wichita, Kansas. And uh, when we came into town from Winston, I mean, from, from out of town, you know, she's not a, she didn't like Peters Creek Parkway. She says, you know, why, why all this stuff here? And she didn't like coming down Business 40. Whenever I, whenever I came back from the airport, I always go through Kernersville so I can see my town. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been out of town. I got to go that way because I want to see my town. You know, it's great to live in Winston-Salem. Right. And, uh, but she didn't think that the view was as beautiful as it could be. Of course, now I'm like, hey, guess what? I think you got Pat Ivey's cell phone number because <laughs> it's suddenly, you know, uh, materializing how you talked about it. Why the center what walls? Because, you know, I think I already talked through it when we were just kind of taking a break here, but why the center walls and, and is, what is that safety-wise? Because I would think you're, you become a pinball machine in there. Well, and let's talk about Business 40 or Salem Parkway. Salem Parkway, yeah. Um, when it was built, it was built just with a narrow, I think it was a four to six foot concrete median out there just like you would say like yeah it was yeah, a, it's a drop and then back in i believe in the 70s uh we added guardrail because right. we kept having so many accidents with people going across right. uh with head-on collisions so salem parkway before the project had all this guardrail in the middle and one of the things we decided to do was to install the new barrier right. uh concrete barrier meeting there um Aesthetically, it looks better uh, than all that guardrail and things like that. And plus, you just simply don't have a lot of room. Uh, and by putting in the, the barrier, it actually gave us a couple more feet on each side right. uh, that could be used for shoulder and things like that. Right. Typically, though, you see a lot of these projects on interstates where we're filling in the median and, um, and building the wall instead of the, the, the narrow uh, grass median or whatever. Example locally would be US 421 okay. and Interstate 40. Uh, those were very narrow medians that were incredibly difficult to maintain. Uh, they're not a what a, a typical width well, median I that we had today. About safety too, because oh, yeah. you've got you got somebody out. I saw someone run across the street <clears> the other day. The one kid ran across the street. They were, and then I'm like I'm like looking, and I'm like, did he just do that? And then the other guy stood, and it was hilarious because the young guy ran across, and he probably gave the car maybe a hundred yard, a hundred feet or so like right. that. The the older guy. He waited. I went by. There was no car to be seen. He walked across the road. You know <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, but. and and when we talk about widening a, a roadway like Interstate 40 or whatever, you either widen to the median or you widen outside. Well, what's going to be more expensive? Buying additional right of way to go out and completely widen, redo bridges and things mm -hmm. like that, or simply fill in the median. You don't have to rebuild bridges or anything like that. You just fill the median in, build the concrete barrier. You've got six lanes. You didn't have to touch anything on the outside. Right. So cost is a is a big issue as well. But the big thing is is safety and maintenance. Uh, all those. All right. So that that was my question with that. And then I want to finish up the Salem Parkway with this question: Is how many signs over under? How many signs do you think you got left? We've probably installed about fifty percent of all the signs right You're not now. Give me another. We just much, oh, I could not even begin to think so about we gotta, the and, and actual. People don't realize number. this. You have to go all the way back to Sandy Ridge, don't you? Yes. And before a little bit. Yeah. The, because Sandy Ridge it says you know this or this, but you know so you've got to put Salem Parkway. Then you have to change the numbers because it's actually so. So everyone knows. 421 goes through Winston-Salem. We just call it the Salem Parkway. Right. But it's still 421. 421. So now we have to change all the um, exit, numbers. exit numbers back to what they would have been. That is correct. Now, do you guys provide that information to Google, or is it normally done by, um, like, you know, grassroots like I it sees me do drive a couple times. Both we have a we have a unit in Raleigh that they have are in constant contact with Google, Waze, right. all the different GPS systems and things like that. So we feed them that information all the time. You go on Google Maps now, you will not see Business Forty that logo anywhere on there. Right. It's already gone. Wow. Okay. It all is right. amazing how quickly. 
well, uh, they can do that. Yeah, I, and you know, projects wise, I uh, I think that you know we could talk for hours, and and I and I want to touch on a couple things if we can come back to maybe another project, and and uh, I think we'll we'll end up with two things later on in the show about where the the Beltway is, mm -hmm. and then also another question for you, but. Um, what are the types of roads so that people understand? Because, you know, I, I, so I live in Louisville. My road is city maintained by Louisville, mm -hmm. I believe, okay. which would mean that Louisville contracts someone to do the work. I, I know that. When I come out of Arbor Run, I turn on um, Louisville Clemens Road. That now becomes your road, right? That's correct. And that's called a feeder road, am I correct? It, or is, it is. Basically, we have these secondary roads. Okay. We have primary roads, and then we have interstate highways. Those are your three major categories. So you categories. don't use feeder thing then? That's, that, that's, that's really more a local designation, whether it's a collector road, whether okay. it's just a local street. So uh, Louisville Clemens Road... Is it's a, definitely a collector road. A collector road. Yes. And then you would primary, secondary, what, what's it for Primary, you? those are the North Carolina U.S. routes, okay. 421, okay. U.S. 158, those roads. All right, like so that. then it's a secondary road. Yes. Makes sense. All right, so I'm going to ask you a Louisville Clemens Road question, and it's not the one you think I'm going to ask okay. you. Okay. So you know where I'm at now, coming out of Arbor mm -hmm. Run, turn left, and now I go to the intersection of... Four uh, no, I go to, I'm at the 421 thing. I could turn right on Louisville Clemens Road because, you know, it wouldn't be Winston-Salem for Scythe County if we didn't have First Street become Country Club, become Shalford, become whatever. <laughs> um, so I can turn right on and go over the bridge of 421, entering into Clemens, or I could turn left on Styers Ferry, I believe, yes. to then to turn to Phillips Bridge. When they passed this, I thought in my mind, oh my goodness, Pat is going to have a heart attack. So if I turn left on Styers Ferry, so I'm now in the area between Country Club and uh, 421. Yes. That's your road because it's in the county, right? Yes. What the heck are you going to do with a new 50, 60, 80 person, I mean, uh, apartment complex, a church, and a daycare across the street? <clears throat> You're going to have to put a light in there. It's uh, it's going to be very interesting because it's not like that's that's already a very congested but it's, area through it's, there. It's less than a hundred feet away from yeah. a light, so how do you handle that? Um, you can't possibly put in a traffic signal that close to another one, and those are the things that we work with our our local planners, whether it's city county planning or individual planning departments like Louisville, Clemens, or Kernersville. And that's Stacy, right? That's correct. She's awesome. They, I just met her. For we the have first great time. partners right. in the in this community, and we really work very well together. But DOT typically responds right. to we don't we do not approve developments, uh, we do not approve rezonings. All we do those are local decisions. We do provide input, and they're very good at, at asking us what the ramifications may be of a certain decision. But in the end, DOT responds to those local decisions. A lot of times, you know, we will make recommendations as far as road improvements and things like that to help mitigate the additional traffic. Um, but we've got so many roads in this area that are already very congested. There really isn't a lot you can do. Well, and then, you know, I, I, I wasn't going to touch on it, but I will because the way you said that, I, I think people have to understand that. There comes <clears throat> a time where you have to be the parent in situations and say, guys, this isn't going to work. We have to do this. Um, I know that uh, uh, the businesses in Clemens want it to be, you know, they, oh, well, you, the, the, the median, whatever. And Clemens Council hired, you know, you guys to come in and mm -hmm. look at it. Um, and, I mean, it's not fun. I don't like it. It makes me have to wait, you know, an extra minute or two before I have that Dario milkshake. Right. Um, but, you know, yeah. uh, Getting into public sometimes from that way, you got to go behind. But hey, if I were those businesses, I'd be happy that I got people going to the grocery store. They're now driving exactly. near my business. I'd put uh, what uh, sandwich boards out there and say, yeah. you know, stop. But it's um, uh, it sometimes you guys have to make the difficult decisions that ensure the safety of the community. Absolutely, yeah. that's our job. Yeah. Safety is the number one priority. All right, so um, three things left to talk about. Uh, one is. You're building a whole bunch of roads, and we're going to come back and look at the thing. You know where the, you're already smiling. Um, 
how are you going to pay for this? I mean, is yeah. it the, is it the I, I, Ivy family estate that's paying for all these roads? What what's going on? I mean, this is expensive. Yeah, it is stuff, and you know we're seeing taxes raised a little bit. We've got this the, the thing going on now with the the quarter cent tax, which then they're talking <coughs> about taking that. So there's a quarter cent sales tax that's proposed that would be used to supplement the teachers' pay. Uh, now that it's I guess worded differently and better and they're promoting it instead of the one cent sales tax account i mean the one cent ad valorem tax the county had to do right. to do this so what would happen is is that one would go away and then we would let our visitors help pay for um some of these things but with you you get everything from gasoline the, they're they're basically in north carolina there are three three areas that we get our our uh funding from okay, so budget Gasoline. It's the it's the state and federal gasoline tax. Okay. The highway use tax, okay. which is the uh, tax you pay when you buy a new car to transfer your title. Okay. And then DMV fees that you pay when you go get your tag or your license renewed. People renewed. say they're already expensive. Exactly. Right. Those are the only three major revenue sources that we have in North so, Carolina. So they don't supplement you through another, uh, like, oh, we're going to put $100,000 in, in this, but then we're also going to collect 50 here, 50 here, and 50 no. here. It's only those three sources. That come we in. don't use any sales tax, any, any property taxes, any income taxes. None of that is used for transportation in the state of North Carolina. All right, so you brought this up, and I'm going to pretend that I was smart. I kind of said this, but you, you led me down the path um, when we were talking before the show. Folks, we have electric vehicles coming. And so those electric vehicles are only <coughs> paying the first tax. No, there's two of the, ta- two of the three taxes. Right. So they're paying when they, when they title it, and they're paying when they purchase it, but then they're not paying anymore. That's correct. But they're still using the roads. Yes, they are. And they're also given a credit when they purchase. So, you did a really good job on this uh, Salem Parkway thing. How are you going to solve this one, Pat? Well, that is a huge issue. No, it's you. you got to well, do this. Personally, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and it's not just a North Carolina problem. This is a, a nationwide problem in terms of how you pay for transportation in light of the, the new technology with, uh, with electric vehicles, which I, I heard a report uh, about a month ago that this is coming much quicker than, than anybody ever thought it was going to. So uh, the one thing that the, uh, our Secretary of Transportation, Jim Trogdon, did was uh, last year he set up a North Carolina First Commission made up of folks from all over, all over the state of North Carolina that their prime responsibility is to look at innovative and different ways to fund transportation in the decades to come. Because the gas tax because of the reasons you've mentioned, is simply not sustainable moving forward. And we've got to find a better way to do it. Mm-hmm. Well, what I will tell you um, is I've been blessed because my family moved around a lot. Um, I have friends. Or they tell me we're friends um, all over. So in college, I would drive to Illinois for the weekend. Or I'd drive to Ohio State with fraternity brothers for the weekend. You know, leave on Thursday after classes. I tried not to ever have a Friday class. And then come back on Sunday night. And uh, so I know, love, and appreciate toll roads. I think they're wonderful. Mm-hmm. And what I love the most about them is, is a lot of people around here hate them. So what happens is, is I'm driving, paying for a road, a dollar here, a dollar there, to drive on that road in no traffic, usually at the speed limit, because I would never speed, don't pull my record. Um, and then <clears throat> everyone else is in congestion. Right. So I, I got a fast pass because I had to go around Raleigh one time and I'm starting to travel more right. with being president of the association and um, with the realtors and uh, for, the, for Winston-Salem and then going to different meetings. And I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. And then Panther Games, you know, oh, it's great to get over there. I haven't been to a Panther Game in two years because right. of the congestion down there. Yes. Um, and so what, what is that taking us to? I mean, you can buy the fast pass. It swipes out of my uh, uh, credit card. Um, after I do it, when I'm down in Florida driving or whatever, went to Disney World, we drove. Right. I didn't have to do anything. The only time I had a problem was is uh, Hilton Head doesn't have, have that when we went down right. for like my wife's birthday or something. But what is that going? Is that helping? Well, the philosophy in North Carolina, even back in the early 20th century, has, has been user pays. That's the philosophy we go by. The gasoline tax, the more you drive, the more gas you buy, the more tax you pay. That's the way it has been. Right. Same thing with, with toll roads. If you use the road, you pay for it. And, uh, and yeah, it's, there are a lot of people for it. A lot of, more people are against it. 
but it's probably one of many menu items that we're probably going to be looking at into the future in terms of how you pay. We've had some very good experience, mainly in Raleigh and Charlotte, uh, with, um, with toll roads. Uh, the, the usage is, is much higher than they had anticipated. And, of course, in Raleigh, we're trying to complete 540 down there, mm-hmm. uh, which will be the last section of their, of their toll road mm-hmm. going around Raleigh. People are using it. A lot of folks have the fast pass because it you don't have to do anything. It just and that debits comes your card. To you guys, right? Yes, okay, it goes good. to the Turnpike Authority, which right. is part of North Carolina DOT. Right. And so they're able to. We're able to use that. We're able to use that funding with them. Now, what's amazing to me, and this is, you know, you drive. I remember, and, and for my friends in South Carolina, I apologize. Um, uh, I remember going to South Carolina, and you could tell when the North Carolina road ended and the <clears> South Carolina <throat> road ended. Yes. Um, I know that when you get on a toll road, you can tell somebody's paying for that road. Exactly. Because it's just better pavement. It's nice. It's, you know, less crowded. It is. And I, it should be. I even think the police don't even come on the toll right. roads. I think they'd go on the other roads. I mean, it's just, you know. Well, um, and, and we've got different ways of doing tolling. You know, obviously we've got the examples in Raleigh where it is a full toll road. The Monroe Bypass in, in outside of Charlotte, full toll, toll road. But we've also got different things like the I-77 toll lanes where you have a choice of either the free lanes that you have today or if you want to pay the additional you can use the, the toll lanes out mm-hmm. there. Different ways of looking at things. And, you know, those, uh, as I understand it, uh, the toll on those lanes are, are dependent on the congestion out there. Correct. If there's yeah. not a lot of congestion, there's not a lot of toll. Yeah, it's but like the, 35 cents, but then at 5 o'clock, it's like dollar seventy five. Exactly. Yeah. But people are willing to pay it. Right. See, my folks live, my, my, um, my in-laws live in the Wichita, above Wichita, below Wichita, and uh, they're <clears> on 35, and there's toll roads and stuff like that. All right, so um, with the projects, uh, 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 and, and we're gonna we're gonna show the project map one more time, and uh, so that's this. All right, so the reason why I showed that and wanted everybody to be refreshed by this is, is a story that I've told you many times. I never thought it'd be done in my lifetime. Okay, um, so barring some of the dates you got on here, I'm. I want my dad's longevity. You know, he's 95 and still alive and still drives on your roads, which scares all of us. But my question is, is this thing going to be completed completed in my lifetime? Yes. Okay. So we've got the and, – and I really feel like there was some impetus to this a couple years ago where you just had some business people just say, all right, darn it, we're going to put some money down so you can start this thing. Is that true? Well, the uh, you know the Beltway has been talked about for decades. I, I uh, want to go there. We, uh, I, we, don't wanna, I don't want to stir that hornet's I nest up you. and have another lawsuit. But you know, we did have a, a bump in the road, and it took us about a decade uh, and so to get that through that. Money is what went to first Raleigh, Raleigh, Charlotte, Charlotte, Greensboro. and all that. Yeah. So we've paid for everyone else's um, with that money. <clears throat> and it what was the original budget that was approved back in the day for the Beltway? The original total budget for the Beltway was less than a billion dollars. So it was a billion dollars, folks. Then we had the lawsuits. What is the final cost of the Beltway going to be in your best guesstimate, plus or minus a billion dollars? Nearly $2 billion. Yeah. The, the, the cost of the project almost doubled. Right. Plus the fees of the lawsuits yes. and stuff like and that. And that's not even including yeah. the MAP Act cases. Okay. Wow. Right. So I'm looking forward to the day that I can come down, and I don't know if it's – I think there's an, uh, an entrance over off of Covington Place, but I don't know if I'd go to Covington Place or if I'd just get down on 421 and get on it there. And then I'm what about – instead of 25 minutes to the Grand Theater, I'm like 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. It's going to be crazy. So when is this all going to be completed? Give me some give me some times. Well, everything on the eastern side, uh, which will be I-74, is, uh, is either under contract – or we're actually buying right of way. Okay. All the work between Salem Parkway and US 52 is all under construction. And that is all done for one specific reason, isn't it? And that is for us to be more <clears throat> presentable in economic development. That's why you guys did that side first, based on recommendations from the city and stuff? Actually, the, uh, of course, you remember the original recommendation was to start on the western side. Right. We did make that change for a couple of reasons. Number one, Interstate 74. Right. That changed. Right. I-74 was going to follow the Eastern Beltway. Number two, US 52. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, our study showed that the Bottle Eastern Act. Beltway will take about 20% of the traffic off of U.S. And PTT. that's going to help so So much. safety right. was a tremendous thing. Right. And then, of course, uh, w- there was a, a multi-county coalition uh, along the Interstate 74 corridor that was really pushing everybody, all the political leaders, uh, not just in Forsyth County, but across the state to get I-74 completed because it was a statewide significant roadway. Because that's Herbalife can get to that quicker. Caterpillar can <clears throat> get to that quicker. Any FedEx can get to that quicker. Everybody, and it's... And absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's our 95 so, on the yeah, side of the it state. Just, it just made sense to start on the eastern side. Fortunately, we are well underway. Um Eastern but side will be completed by? Should be completed by early 2025. Okay. And when will everything be completed by? Well, once we once we do that, the very first project on the western side, which is the piece from 52 over to Highway 67, okay. what I call the Bethania Bypass, right. um, that will be started, our property acquisition in 21, construction in 23. Okay. And then we will work our way down so to 421 and 40. So we're not going to go this way and then start over here. We're going to start this way next year as well, too. So and we're going, start working okay. our way down. Okay. Absolutely. And so when will we get to 421 at um, the very, Muddy Creek? The not very the little last one. One there to I guess we better go ahead and let the Clemens folks say that. right and and it is a very important segment, it is but it the is. very last piece of it from Interstate 40 to Stratford Road is scheduled right now to be to be awarded in 2028 so that when would, it would be built by 2030 you think then 2030 2031 Right, so that's uh, so that's 11 years from now. I might still be driving still. That I'd See? be 63. Exactly. Yeah, 63. You know, it's about 10, 20 years later than we wanted to, but. You're nice in saying the 10 in front of that. Well, and, the you know, we've got an example locally in Greensboro. They're almost through with their loop, and we have seen what a difference that that project has made already. I still We're like gonna to see turn left to go to Winston and go up to— I do, uh, too. You know, because you got to go by Embassy Suites when you're coming yeah. back from the hotel. What, they want me to turn right. That's not the right way to go, but, but it is quicker. It's going to make yeah. a tremendous difference to that area. Yeah. All right, so last question. Um, <clears throat> what do you see— and what do you want in the future with Winston-Salem? There, there is still so much work that needs to be done, but two projects in particular. Uh, widening of Interstate 40 from I-74, 311, uh, all the way to Sandy Ridge Road. Uh, right now it's just four lanes. It needs to be six lanes desperately. That project is actually in the program. Are you going to cut down lanes while you do that, or are you just going to build it to the side and not cut? You? No, we'll we'll maintain the the four lanes in Thank each you. direction. Can, yes. can we can we take a breath on some things yes, here? Yeah, exactly. Right. But that will be later this decade, okay. probably around twenty twenty eight. That project's supposed to begin. Okay. Um, also, widening uh, proposed to widen um, Salem Parkway from the Beltway Interchange out to Sandy Ridge Road. Okay. That's a little bit later, probably right after 2030 we'll be looking at there. But locally, uh, and this project's not even in the program, we have got to look at upgrading US 52 from basically from Interstate 40 all the way through town up to the interchange with the Northern Beltway. Project needs to be widened. It needs to be upgraded to interstate standards because the plan moving forward is to extend the routing of Interstate 285 uh, which currently ends at Interstate 40, all the way through town to intersect with the Beltway. I will tell you, um, Interstate, uh, I mean, 52 is a surfing adventure anytime you're yes. out there. Bouncing around, et cetera, I think that's excellent. I just worry about my friends in Kang, because it is a four-syllable, four-syllable, four-letter word, um, uh, of how they're going to get to work, but I guess they'd use 74. Yes. Or, yeah. Okay. All right. But now... You're not getting away with, with, with DOT stuff. What do you see and what do you want as a citizen? You know, the, the one thing I've seen over the last, really over the last decade is the tremendous partnerships yeah. that, that, we've, that we've had. Obviously, it benefits me as a DOT person, mm-hmm. just working together with the city, the county, all the cities. Because uh, and, and, we couldn't have done the Business 40 Salem Parkway project without that. Mm -hmm. And I really see that continuing uh, because we're going to have to have that for cooperation. US 52, that is going to be a tremendous project that's going to affect a lot of communities out there. What I want to see occur, and, you know, we think about 
when Business 40, original Business 40, US 52, we hear a lot from those communities about how those roads separated the communities. What we're trying to do as a department is bringing those communities back together, using those roads to build those projects and or bring those communities back together. That is something that I really, really want to continue to focus on. We've made some tremendous gains over the last uh, last decade, really, and particularly with Business 40. Mm-hmm. But there's still so much work to do, and you really don't understand how those projects impacted those communities until you talk to the people in those communities, and that those uh, those feelings are still there. But we're slowly, slowly building that trust back with those communities. And uh, like we did with, with Business 40, mm-hmm. we've got to do what we say we're going to do and really try to use transportation to help knit those communities back together. Man, that's excellent, excellent. Um, he's Pat Ivey. He's a Division Nine NCDOT engineer, and he is the man behind a whole team of people who – Built the road that was supposed to take two years in 13? 14 months. 14 months. Yes. And you didn't make the mayor look too bad. You know, he said, end of the year, you... you I love that. He was like, yeah, Pat said, no, 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 no <laughs> don't take that back. But no, I mean, he, great, great things, and we appreciate you being My here. My pleasure. Folks, thanks for watching Camel City Chat. Of course, we'll be back next Wednesday. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to like, subscribe, make some comments. I want to keep this channel going. Appreciate you... Uh, being here this week. Next week, we're going to have our friend Teddy Burris on, uh, but uh, Pat is uh, a friend, and, and just I cannot thank you enough for everything you do for us. I appreciate you. Thank you. We'll see you next time on the chat.